Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Is wrestling. Welcome everyone to another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling with Cody Diener. I am Cody Diener and I am a professional wrestler. I'm a professional wrestling producer. I am a traveling professional motivational speaker. I am a proud father of four children and a happily married man to a beautiful wife. And I am a podcaster. This is my podcast. If this is your first time listening, thank you for joining us here at Wrestling is Life is Wrestling with me. I always start the episode going through my various job titles, and we have to add a job title to this introduction. Breaking news, if you've been following me and my social media at Cody Diener or been following my sponsor at Rest When Dead Clothing on Instagram, then you know all about the hat that I'm wearing, this new signature series hat, this t-shirt that's behind me, the new signature Cody Diener Rest When Dead shirt, or the one on this side. If you don't know what I'm talking about because you can't see where I'm pointing, Thing, then you got to go over to Cody Diener podcast on YouTube and you can watch the video of this. You can see the merch, you can see the swag. But if you've been following those accounts, then you heard the breaking news. I am now the vice president of Reaper Fitness Group and Rest When Dead Clothing. Guys, I cannot overstate how humbled I am and how proud I am to be able to make this announcement and honestly how unexpected it is for me to be making this announcement. I did not think just a few months ago when I partnered with Rest When Dead Clothing and they became a sponsor of this podcast and a sponsor of me and my journey as a wrestler and a speaker that just over a month later, I'd be announcing that I'm actually the vice president of that clothing line. I think this just goes to show that the things that I've been preaching since I started this project, things like just put yourself out there, create something, put it out to the world and make sure that that thing you're creating and putting out there is a positive thing, then positive things will come back to you and you will meet some amazing people in that journey. Just Put it out there, give it a shot, do what you love. Well, this is proof that that works because I've done that. I've put myself out there. I asked for sponsorships and I connected with Rest When Dead Clothing. And that partnership has gone so well. They've seen success with that partnership so fast that they have decided that they want to make me the vice president of the clothing line. <laughs> I did not think when I started a podcast that within a few months, I'd be telling you I am the VP of a clothing line. But here I am. I'm saying it. And I'm happy to be repping this merch. I'm happy to be telling you that I am now the vice president of Rest When Dead Clothing. You're going to be hearing more about that. You're going to be hearing more about Rest When Dead. And also some giveaways, some special things I'm going to be doing with the brand for you, my listeners, and also independent professional wrestlers all across the country. I'm going to give back to the business because that's what we're all about at Rest When Dead. We're not just about giving you awesome clothing. We're also about giving back to the communities that we work in. That is within the fitness community. We give a lot back to them as well as the professional wrestling community and independent wrestling. So we're going to be doing that. So if you are a wrestler listening to this, continue to listen to this. Thank you for listening. We got some special stuff coming down the pipe for you. Today's guest is my buddy of many, many years. You might know him as Ty Dillinger. You might know him as a brief stint back in the reincarnated ECW as Gavin Spears. <laughs> um, but I know him as my friend Ronnie. You might know him as his current name, which is also the name he was using when I first met him on the independent scene. He's now an AEW superstar. It's Sean Spears. Sean Spears is from the Niagara region. I just spent some time in the Niagara region. It was awesome. I was speaking. Uh, I had a getaway with my family. But one of the cool things about my job, my various jobs, guys, is that I can use the time to the best of my ability and to the most positive way I can use it. And that is spending time with my family. So I was recently speaking at a youth conference. And... 
decided to make it a business slash uh, pleasure trip. And I brought my family. We went to Great Wolf Lodge in the Niagara region. We went on water slides and spent three glorious days in a water park and just having fun as a family. It was amazing. I think if anybody wants... I, Great Wolf Lodge is not a sponsor of this podcast, but if you want to, if you're listening to this, be a sponsor. Or if you want to sponsor this podcast, go to ads at codydeer.com and you can also be a sponsor uh, for this podcast. I promise you, you do not have to make me your vice president if you start sponsoring my podcast, but who knows? It might happen. But we went to Great Wolf Lodge. It was awesome. I spent time with my family, did some speaking. It was awesome. It was so great to be in the Niagara region again and to go see the Niagara Falls. If you've never seen Niagara Falls, make time to do that in your life. Every time I see it, even though I trained as a professional wrestler in Niagara Falls, every time I go, it blows my mind. It is a thing of beauty. If you haven't been, go because it's absolutely amazing um if you want me to speak at your event like i was speaking when i was in the niagara region you can go to chrisgrayspeaks.com and you can learn all the information about my speaking career and maybe bring me to your school or youth event i would love to do that but that's a little tangent of me talking about the niagara region because i'm talking about sean spears let's get back on track sean spears i have known for two decades I mentioned that I trained to be a professional wrestler in Niagara Falls. That was my old stomping ground over 20 years ago. And when I got into the business, one wrestling school that I visited frequently within my first few years was WrestlePlex with a very good friend of mine, Eric Young. And when I went into WrestlePlex, Eric Young's wrestling school, many, many, many moons ago, there was a dashing young man in the ring, throwing punches, beating somebody up in the corner. And I remember seeing this guy throwing a punch and thinking to myself, that guy's going to make a million dollars in the professional wrestling business. And that person that I saw and met for the first time was my friend, Sean Spears. We have known each other for many years. We have shared many rings together. And I'm very happy to have him on the podcast today with part one of our conversation. We talk about a lot of things that he's never talked about before publicly. Um, or if he has, he very rarely does it. He only does it with people that he's comfortable talking to about it. And that person is me because I'm a friend of his. I want to say that I think Sean Spears is one of, if not the best professional wrestler in the world. He is criminally underrated if you ask any professional wrestler who has ever worked with sean spears they will tell you the exact same thing i get asked all the time cody who's your favorite opponent and one of the guys on my list it's too hard to answer that with just one person i usually kind of give three or four guys and one of those three or four guys that i always say is sean spears He's wonderful. He's a new father. He is a husband to a beautiful wife who's also a friend of mine. And we just talk about life because this is wrestling is life is wrestling. So we do. We talk about a lot of things that you've maybe never heard Sean Spears talk about. So I think you're going to very much enjoy this conversation. If you are a patron over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener, then you could listen to not just this part one you're going to hear today, but part two, which is going to be released next week. You don't even have to wait till next week. You can go listen to the full conversation right now over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. There's different levels there. You can sign up, support this project of mine, and you can listen to that full conversation right now, early and ad-free, as well as a bonus story. In this conversation we have, we do not talk about the Royal Rumble 2017, where Sean Spears was number 10, the 10th entrant, uh, entrant in the Royal Rumble. We don't talk about that here, but we do over in the bonus story. Uh, over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. The story is hilarious, but also very touching. And it brings a tear to my eye listening to that story. And it might bring a tear to your eye as well and make you laugh. It's 
a really cool behind the scenes story about everything that went down um, regarding the 2017 WWE Royal Rumble with Sean Spears then wrestling as the Perfect Ten Ty Dillinger. Go sign up at patreon.com slash Cody Diener and listen to that story. It's for level two patrons and up over there on my Patreon. All right. That's enough shilling. That's enough of an intro. That's enough me kind of getting reacquainted with my wonderful listeners. And if you're a new listener, again, welcome. I think you are going to enjoy this conversation that you are going to listen to now. This is part one with my friend and soon to be yours, Sean Spears. All right, let's do this, brother. Woo. Woo. I'm here with, I'm not going to give you a big, long introduction, John. Uh, I'm going to have a really hard time not calling you Ronnie, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you Sean simply because you put that in your bubble. But for the listeners, I might end up calling you Ronnie. You're a man that needs no introduction. Even if you did need one, I'm not going to give you one anyways, because I just put you over for like three minutes in the intro of this podcast, so I don't need to do it in front of you. But I didn't uh, hear that part. You know oh, I mean? do you want? Yeah, but I don't, I'm not going to go through it again. I've, I, I, I appreciate I've, you being different, but I mean, everybody else gives me a pretty warm. Hey, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there, you know. What I mean? Dude, I've been putting you over for like two decades. I don't need to put you over even more right now, do I? I, I am barely on TV. My ego needs all the help it can get right now. Okay, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, <laughs> all right, let me give you I'm, this. I'm, 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 uh, <laughs> I'm sitting here with the most underrated professional wrestler in the world. The man that when I met him knew as soon as I saw him throw his first punch knew he was going to make a million dollars in this business and is the most underrated man on the microphone in professional wrestling today. My buddy, Ronnie, you know him as Sean Spears. How's that? Well, that's, that's, that's pretty damn good. You're going to get some heat for that microphone comment though. People are going to be like, no, he can't talk. Yeah. You're, you just <laughs> oh, well, wait. That's all right. We need all the heat we can get. Cause I, this, po- this podcast, I don't get any heat for it because all we do is we talk about positive things. We talk about life. It's very, it's all positive. We don't do any of the dirt, but if you feel like throwing dirt today, I guess you can, but that's not, that's not the goal. It's all about positive stuff. Here, here's the thing. Uh, what, what would we consider dirt in the industry? Uh, I'm at the point in my life and career where everything is good. Mm. Every, everything is good. Nothing is bad. And if whatever could be considered bad, it could always be worse. Everything is, everything is good. I am as happy as I could possibly be. Everything is good, man. I mean that, that seriously. Yeah, and I know I know you personally. I've known you for many years, and I want to. St- I usually start at the beginning, uh, and because I kind of think chronologically when I we start a conversation, I always start about the beginning. But I don't want to start at the beginning. I want to start about the here and now. Mm. And your father, and this is it's still pretty new. But I've talked to you many times over the years, having life discussions, riding down the road. I, I have four kids. We've talked about, you know, being fathers. But a lot of the life discussions we had was before you were a dad and now you're a dad. How awesome is it being a dad right now? Oh, it's it's I think that's why no matter what. I'm okay. I think he was my, and to your point, we kind of touched on that in previous conversations over the years, especially when you had all your kids and I would ask you questions about how it's changed your perspective, not just on life, but you know, on how you view your occupation and goals moving forward. Um, my hope that when I eventually did have children was that it would help, uh, help me kind of decide what path to take or make things easier in terms of making those kinds of decisions. Uh, it has more so than I could possibly have ever imagined. Um, everything is for him. Everything is about him. Everything is easier because of him. And uh, selfishly, uh, I, I'm so thankful for that. Um, but yeah, it is just, there's nothing like, uh, and this is going to get cheesy and weird and stuff like that. Not weird, but like, you can hey be man, in the it, there's nothing cheesy or weird that you could say right now. This is wrestling is life. We're going to talk about life. A lot of people say start a sentence like that when I do these conversations. Nothing you say is going to be cheesy. This is life, man. And this is real. I, too. I, I absolutely love that. I just, you know, you can wake up really tired or can be early in the morning or you can come home just exhausted. Like yesterday, I had a hell of a day and it was, I was running around and taking care of the properties and da 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 da. 
And I was exhausted by the time I got home. And the second I walked in the door, he didn't even say anything. Just looked at me and went, <laughs> and I just went, oh, I was like, oh, come here, come here, come here. And it was just, it takes away everything. And yes, that's all that matters. It's right yeah. there. That's all that matters. So uh, being a dad, to your point, without rambling on forever, because I could about him, it is the single greatest thing I have done and will ever do in my life. Mm-hmm. I, from my perspective, I don't think I've told you this personally, but I'm I'm going to tell you this now, personally and publicly. I remember talking to you about our careers and kind of our goals and where we were headed. Mm-hmm. And there was a number of, of them. And there was one specifically, we were doing a really long drive up north. I think we we're going to Timmins. So for anyone that d- doesn't know their geography in terms of Ontario, Timmins from Southwestern Ontario, it's like eight, 10 hour drive. And we're driving and we're passing a lot of not really nice properties. And we just kind of started to talk about kind of goals in wrestling. And you had, you had a lot of different goals and you were, it was at a point when you were kind of conflicted. And I, I just noticed in our conversation, there wasn't like, there wasn't peace about whatever decision you were making. You didn't know exactly what you wanted to do. You had some goals, but those goals didn't seem solid. Any conversation I've had with you and just your demeanor in general, since you've had your son, that conflicted uncertainty no longer exists with you. Mm, that's there's just there, there's fair. a piece there's a piece about you that wasn't always there i don't know if, yes. if anyone else has told you that or if that makes sense but th- i have noticed that 100 percent. well no one else has told me that because i'm the very again you've known me since i've started so i'm very uh i can come across as very um standoffish you know mm. it could be the tattoos the hair or just my overall demeanor um there i don't let people in and i don't trust people until you give me a reason to trust you like I, and i sure. i would hope that it's the same in return i expect nothing except the same um but i don't talk to many people about this kind of stuff and no one has ever told me that because they don't get the information that you've gotten or they haven't had the opportunities to see the things or have those conversations with me like you have um i think in the you know just as much as i do and the goal for all this in the chase for all this, it's it's a toss up. It's yeah. always a toss up. I tell my students uh, all the time, and even I'll tell talent. I've had conversations with AEW talent that are on TV every week. Like they're extremely talented guys and girls, and uh, but they're going through it mentally uh, for whatever reason, whatever they're battling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not trying to navigate how this industry works. And I tell them all the time, look, we sign up for the maybes. That's it. We sign up for the maybes. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Maybe you'll get a push. Maybe you won't. You know what I mean? Like that's the, and I think the longer you're in this, the more you come to terms with that and it's easier to accept. So I think in the pursuit of all this wrestling and trying to achieve this goal after that goal, after that goal, regardless of what's in your control and whatnot, uh, that can kind of drive you to the brink of madness if you let it. Yeah. So I think in the same vein, we're always looking for um, uh, little hope spots along the way. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like, okay, if I can get to here, okay, that'll hold me over for a little bit. Wow, but no, I want more. And then it's getting to the, which is fine because you're building and you're chasing each goal and goal. But the mentality side of things, it could lead you down a dark path if you're not careful. The frustration, the anger, the, you know what I mean? Once he came along everything was just it just everything just it's my reason yes so if i'm going to put myself through the suffering of going on the road taking all the bumps da 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 it's for him if i have to consistently fight and travel and be gone and da 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 da, da it's okay cuz it's for him my goal in life now isn't to be the best professional wrestler i could it isn't to headline main event or wrestlemania it isn't to be the world champion in AEW. My goal ultimately at the end of the day is to be the best father that I can. End of story. Because at the end of the day, when my time comes, hopefully he's going to be standing at my bedside. And I just, I I want him to say nothing, but I had a hell of a life, dad. Thank you. That's it. That's all I care about. Cause that's all that's going to matter then. Yes. So I know that's deep, but I'm able to think that, 
that far, you know? Yes. Yes. The exact same thing happened to me. I, rem I remember when I had my, f my, f my first child, my, my daughter river, who's now 12 years old, which is insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sure, so I she was yes. yay, yay tall. And I was like, I oh, know, man. Yeah, it's crazy. And I remember when she was born, I had a number of guys ask me this. My first indie show that I did, they're like, so you done? And I'm like, done what? Like having kids? And they're like, no, are you done wrestling? Like, how much longer are you going to be able to do this? I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? I'm like, well, most guys leave after they have a kid. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, man, this has lit a fire under me even more. Because one, I my goal has always been to make a living wrestling because that's what I love. And I want to just make a living doing something that I love. I don't want to do a job that I hate. And so that was kind of been just my overall goal. And then that got even more and became more important to me when I had my daughter because I don't want her to see her dad coming home angry and like, resentful about his job i i want her to see me following my passion and doing what i love so that was that just lit a fire under me to show her that hey you can do what you want to do and you can achieve whatever you want to achieve you know daddy grew up in a small town in the middle of nowhere with a population less than 200 people and now he's wrestling on tv that's what i want to be able to show her but then also the second thing was exactly what you said we live for the hope spots often but once i had my kids i realized i don't need any more hope spots <laughs> just, just give me the give me the heat i'll i'll, I'll just do a come I'll, just give me heat beat me up i'll hit my comeback i'll hit my ddt one two three it doesn't matter or just beat me up and job me out i don't care because i'm getting paid the same at the end it put everything into perspective mm -hmm. where the hope spots didn't matter as much because like you said those don't matter. Those little wins that you're always looking for in wrestling, because when you don't have a source of happiness outside of the business and your only source of happiness is success in the business. Once you have a kid, you learn, oh, man, if all my happiness is based on success in wrestling, I'm freaking screwed because yeah. that's because that's not true happiness at all. to talk to you about giver for connor it's my latest fundraising campaign that i do through my giver for charity organization and i'm raising money for a very special boy named connor who i met when he was just eight years old i met him at a wrestling show and i recently reconnected with him and his family and was surprised to hear that he is a walking miracle Connor was not supposed to live past the age of 18, and when I recently reconnected with him, I learned that he is now 22 years old. So he is literally a walking miracle, but when I met him when he was only eight, he had a lot of medical issues, and he still has those medical issues as well as a number of growing medical concerns and hospital bills and medical bills that continue to just keep going up and up. So I decided that I wanted to do something for him and his family. And I've started a fundraiser to try to relieve some of that financial financial stress off of his family. So if you go right now to givesendgo.com slash giver for Connor, that's G-I-V-E-R-F-O-R-C-O-N-O-R. That's givesendgo.com slash giver for Connor you can learn more about this fundraising campaign and if you would it'd be great if you could just donate a few dollars so that's givesendgo.com slash giver for connor we don't want to just give her for charity we want to give her for my buddy connor givesendgo.com slash giver for connor But it's, so, it, it's fair because when you start, that's how it has to be. I'm a sure. big believer in, you know, I, I don't, you're just saying, I put all my eggs in this wrestling basket. Yeah. And by hook or crook, it, it's happening. I, I, no matter what, it has to happen. There has to be that level of drive. There has to be that level of nothing stopping me. Nothing is going to stop me. If you take yourself out of the game, that's it. You're done. 
Yes. You know what I mean? So, but to that, to that point too, on the flip side of that, if the longer you're in it and the longer something might not be happening, happening, if you don't have an outside something to balance you out, if you don't have an outside focus, it could, it could walk that fine line. Like, I don't, I don't care about money. Like that's going to sound bad to say I do obviously, cause it's a necessity, but I right. don't care what the guy next to me is making in AEW. I don't care who's right. making more than me. I don't care mm-hmm. if a guy has been wrestling for three years and he's paid twice as much as me. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. I could care less. What I care about is when I walk out of the room every morning and I see my son playing and all around all his toys, he doesn't know about, you've seen my house. He doesn't, yeah. he can't. Yep. And he won't be able to compute what it means or how big or all he knows is that, I have a good life and I get to play with my toys. And as long as he wakes up and gets to feel that way every morning, all I need to do is make X amount of dollars in order for him to do that. That's all that matters. Who yeah. gives a shit? So yeah. I don't need to be a, a multi, multi, 10, 15, $20 million a year guy. Mm-hmm. That's, it's, uh, ridiculous. It doesn't matter. His life is yeah. great. That's mm-hmm. all that matters. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very important what you just said there, man. Like it's, it's so, so important. And I hope a lot of young, young guys and girls watching this, hopefully they watch this because there's some good knowledge in it already. Um, please understand what, what Dieter was just talking about right there. Very important to have an outlet outside of wrestling, not yes. as a backup plan, because I don't necessarily believe in backup plans, um, but as a balancing act. I love that you just said that right before that because that you don't believe in backup plans because that was something i was gonna i was gonna come back to i wanted to ask you about that specifically because you said oh. you put all your eggs in that basket and you said that i i was the same i talked to um rosemary about this courtney rush i had her on um a, a couple of months ago she was one mm-hmm. of my first first guests and we talked about this because i didn't do that man like i went and got my degree i got an english language and literature degree and then I got a teaching degree and I had this safety net kind of underneath my indie struggle that if I didn't make it and I fell off, I was going to be okay because I had, I had some security just in case, but I've never been someone that chases security. So my kind of fork in the road happened once I got my degree, I had been doing, I had taught kind of doing substitute teaching for like two weeks, two weeks in, I got offered a full-time teaching job right off the hop. Like you want one, you got it. And that was unheard of at the time. They were not giving out teaching jobs to new teachers, but I got offered one the first two weeks of teaching. And I said, no, because I knew if I say yes to this, I'm going to fall into a secure life as a teacher and I'm not going to follow my passion of being a wrestler. So I said no to that security and I kept pushing forward, but I still have a degree to fall back on. If God forbid something was to happen to me health wise or whatever, I do have a quote unquote backup plan. And I know that some people, maybe you're one of these guys tell people, don't have a plan B. You got to just go for a plan A. Cause I think some people operate like that. If they have a plan B, they're not going to give it their hardest for plan A. And what I was talking to Courtney about was I sometimes wonder about myself. Am I that person? Did I not give plan A enough of my attention because I had a plan B? Mm. Maybe. And her perspective, which was interesting, she said, well, no, maybe for you, you wouldn't have enjoyed plan A that has worked out for you. You wouldn't have been able to enjoy it and pursue it in the positive way that you have unless you had the plan B. Because I know a lot of people that only have the plan A and their life is freaking miserable because plan A ain't, ain't working for them. And then they're not happy. And I've never not been happy wrestling. No matter I'm wrestling, you know this, whether I'm wrestling in, at a freaking carnival in front of 20 people, I'm having the best time in the world wrestling in front of those kids because I don't care about the amount of people or like you said, the money. I just love this. And I've always been able to maintain that mentality. And maybe it's because I had a plan B. What do you, what do you think? Because you, you, you said, you know, you don't let, you don't necessarily agree with backup plans. I will never tell somebody to, um, put all your eggs in one basket. I'll never tell mm. somebody that you need a backup plan. Um, I think to each 
to each their own. I don't think you haven't pushed as hard as you can. I think you have. I think you've been able to do both. Um, maybe the reason you enjoy it so much is because kind of like what we were just talking about, it's not just about you anymore. You know what I mean? You know that, that you know, I know you, so you live a hundred percent of your life for your, for your family, for your kids, mm-hmm. your wife, that, that is it. That is all. Everything is about them, mm-hmm. which is why you get to enjoy it so much. So if you decide to, okay, wrestling is <laughs> now going to be the back burner of things. I'll just do it every now and then you have a career to step into. I tried to go to school and it didn't work. I got rejected from three universities. And then I had to take a kind of a stress test to get into a college. But the stress test was because there were so many applicants. And I missed that by, I think, six or 7%. I missed getting into that. So Mm -hmm. I had attempted to go for a backup plan. It just didn't work. The reason why I think um, I don't believe in backup plans nowadays for me personally is that I, uh, my family doesn't come from much money. Uh, If I had done well, or let's say I got in university and let's say I got a really good job and let's say I, you know, graduated college or whatever the reason, and I started making okay money, I might have felt compelled to help provide. I might've put those goals and dreams on the back burner and I would have settled for, like you were saying, that comfortable little blanket of, okay, there's money coming in. I can help my mother. I can help my Sisters, everything is okay. This is what matters more. And then time would have passed to where I would not have pushed enough for plan A. Mm-hmm. Either way, I think they're both uh, admirable qualities. Either way. Um, yeah. I just know that I was very lucky along the way. If a lot of things didn't uh, roll my way or a lot of people didn't help me in the way that they did, I, I, would, not, I would be struggling probably to find that plan B now when it matters most. Yeah. So I don't think there's necessarily a right way of going about it or a wrong way of going about it. I just think it's a matter of the individual. And like you said, what's going to allow you to enjoy your life the most. If having a backup plan is a little psychological peace of mind, by all means, go get it. Yeah. If going full right at this wrestling thing or whatever endeavor that you're chasing, music, entertainment, a, just a job, college, then go full force. Give yourself X amount of time push to the moon. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't, you tried and you can move on to the next phase of your life. I think either way is admirable. And either way, it kind of works. It depends on the individual. Yeah, sure. So for you, you mentioned two things that stood out to me um, in what you were just saying. Uh, One, you mentioned your mom. And two, you mentioned people that help you. Um, When you decided to make this crazy decision which is very unique because me and you're both the same in this way something in us decided we're actually going to try this crazy thing called wrestling Mm -hmm. most people love it from when they're young and they they keep that love me and you're both the same in that way but something in us is different than our other friend that you know we watched wrestling with when we were a kid something in us made us decide i'm actually going to try this I have learned that I need people to come alongside me to help me. None of us are successful alone. Was one of the first people that helped you make that decision to finally start following this passion. Was it your mom or was there somebody else that kind of helped push you to Uh, to make that jump? There was no, there was no one. Um, Okay. So it wasn't your mom, but your mom wasn't, she wasn't happy about that decision or she was skeptical. Mm. No. So, so what happened was the same thing. You grew up loving it. And then uh, one day I just went, oh, I'm going to go to wrestling school. There was nothing that triggered it. There was nothing that, and I just went online Yeah. back in the early days of the internet. And I saw yeah. two schools and one was uh, off of the Wild Simones in Pennsylvania. Yes. Uh, and then another one was, um, no, I don't think, uh, the Hart Brothers School of Wrestling. And it was in Cambridge, Ontario, yes. which is only an hour, an hour and a bit from me. And I went, oh my gosh. Oh, it's so close. That's way closer than Pennsylvania, and it's way cheaper than Pennsylvania. So I had called them up, and I got – and let's be clear. There's no Harp Brothers School in Cambridge, Ontario. There, There is nothing, the kids. Yes. Nothing. <laughs> so I got the whole, oh, there's one spot left. There's one bed left. You can have lodging here. I got worked to the whole to, – to the nine. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Maxed out my credit card and got a spot. I think I was 20, 20 or 21 at the time. So. Okay. 
Then I went out and told my parents that I'm going to go to wrestling school after I'd already taken a spot. And this was out front. They were both sitting on the porch talking and they both said, no, you're going to go to the casino. You're going to get a good job. You can make a lot of money at your age and things like that. They were both just adamant about taking the, the, the safer path. Um, you know, we don't want to get, we don't want you to get hurt. You're pretty small. You'll be back in three weeks. Like, let's just go this route. I didn't tell them yeah. that I already maxed out my credit card and spent uh, $4,000 trying to get into this school. Um, but I ended up talking to my dad and saying, Hey, just come down with me to check it out. And then if it doesn't work, then, you know, I won't go. I was already going, I had already yeah. kind of set it in my mind. And he, he drove me down and we saw this place and knowing what I know now, I should have saw the red flags, but I saw a wrestling ring. Yes. And that was it. That's all I needed to see. For those of you that listened to episode 12 and 13 with my friend David Sahadi, you heard us talk about the new book that he's written called My Dad, My Dying Son. Well, that book is available now on Amazon. You can buy it at mydadmyson.com. That's mydadmysun.com. Here's what my friend David had to say. My dad wasn't just my dad, he was also my best friend, and that's why his loss hurt so much. They say that deeper the love, the deeper the grief. And I'm still grieving so deeply. And one thing that would bother me was when my dad first passed the first couple of weeks, I would cry everywhere. I went. I'd go to a restaurant across the street named Stir and cry. And people would hug me and say, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And certain people would say, I know how you feel. And I'd say, have you lost a parent? Have you lost a mother or father? And they would say no. And then I would say in my head, not to them, because I know their attention was good, you have no idea how I feel. Because I knew it was going to feel bad, but I had no idea it was going to hurt this much. So it angered me, even though they were trying to do something good. Because unless you've lost a parent that you love so much, Nobody can know the feelings, the grief of, of, of loss on that deepest of primal levels. You can purchase your copy of My Dad, My Dying Son at mydadmyson.com. That's mydadmysun.com. So the first person to really um, help navigate and guide me in the right direction, I think I went to a Neo show. Mm. And way, way back in the day, and this is when guys like you were on it, uh, Derek Wild, Eric Young, all those kind of guys. And I think I was talking to a few of you guys, asking questions. And uh, I remember asking, uh, um, JC Owens, remember him? Yes, of Big course. JC. I think I was wearing, uh, I think the Hart Brothers School ran a promotion called A, A, oddly enough, A, A C W, A C W. Oh, I think it was, was it A C W or I C W? I remember there was an I C W. I think maybe it was A C W. A C W. Okay. Cause he didn't really, run, okay. he didn't really oh. run shows. He ran like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he had merch, of course. Uh, of course so JC Owens <laughs> saw me wearing an A C W shirt and he goes, ha! And he started laughing at me and I just went, uh, oh, shit. And yeah. I think he went and told Derek Wilde. And Derek Wilde came over to me, and I think I was asking him a question. He goes, oh, so you're at a wrestling school in Cambridge? And he already knew the deal. He already knew whatever. Everybody already knew except the new kid that was fucking here. And he goes, yep. oh, you should go talk to that guy right over there. And it was EY. Mm -hmm. So I went over to him, and he's the one who said, ah, I spent time there too. I know the deal. Look, I have a school. It's just down the road. If you're interested, we'll get, we can talk. Come visit. Mm -hmm. And the rest was he was the one that kind of was finally to come here and start nice. – putting me around the right guys, you and the right shows. And I, once I was in his hands, I was very well taken care of starting out my journey. So uh, to your point and not to get too long winded and not to take, a, it's, it's not a downer at my parents. My parents were just being parents. They were doing yeah. that. My son came to me and says, Hey, I want to play in the NFL. So oh, these guys, have, mm. these guys run head first. It's like, Oh, but yeah. who am I to say? No, I can't. I chased. I understand. I get it. It hurts, yeah. but I can't Every, say no to you. Everybody has their reasons, man. Like everybody has their own story. And you, you, you said earlier that you grew up with not a lot of financial means, 
right? You did. You grew up and you were probably struggling as when when your mom and dad were trying to raise you. They weren't. You didn't grow up with a silver spoon. So if they, that's where their perspective came from. They're like, hey, mm -hmm. you can make good money at the casino. Like this is we've set we've set a comfortable. We've worked our butt off to give you a comfortable life. Now you have this opportunity in front of you to go work at this casino. You can create a comfortable life for yourself as well. That's their mentality, which totally makes sense because mm -hmm. that follows their story. So it's not a knock on, on your parents. They're just looking out for you, right? Yeah, and that's what I realize now. Parents at the end of the day, good parents, uh, they just simply want their kids to do better. That's it. Like yeah. I, I've done very well. I've been very smart and I've been very fortunate to have what I have. I want my kid to grow up and see this and go, okay, I want to do better. It's not a shot at me. It's just I want him to have that drive to succeed. And I will say, yes, son, this is great. You can do better. Do better. So yeah. I think that's all a, a parent wants is to, to have their son or daughter have the, the fortunate lifestyle that uh, they're either, they either wanted for themselves or that they're accustomed to having already. Yeah. So, yeah. When, when did the switch happen for your mom? Um, you've been, you've been open about this in some past interviews. Your mom has, you know, recently passed away. She was mm -hmm. one of your biggest supporters. When did your mom, I know your mom ended up loving that you're a professional wrestler and, uh -huh. and, and, and <laughs> was like your biggest fan, like a thousand percent. I had conversations with your mom and she couldn't, I, I remember just watching her watch you and that look on her face was like, okay, that's the true look of love of a mother like just pure pride pure love like it's you can't even describe it other than yep that's the way a mom's supposed to look at her son that's what your mom had do you know when that switch happened for you for your mom where she decided okay yeah i'm all in you go for it i don't know when the official switch happened the great thing about my my parents is that they've never if I've set my sights on something, like I said, I've, I already spent the money and then told them afterwards. Which is a good strategy, by the way. It's too late now. You, yeah. you want to get that money back? It ain't happening. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but they never, they never once, like once they found that out, they never said, you need to get a refund. You need to mm. change your, you need to, no, that's not happening. They never ever made me. And granted, I was over the age of 18. I was a grown ass man, but they never once said, you can't do that. You need to change your mind. They just went, I guess this is happening. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Be careful. So as time went on, they'd go to the indie shows. Like my dad went to a couple. My mom would go to a bunch with my younger siblings and stuff like that. I couldn't tell you when the exact moment switched. I just think she knew that once it was happening, like once she saw me at a wrestling show, she said, okay, this is, this must be it. Maybe they thought it was one of those things where oh, he's just got to get it out of his system, mm. which sometimes for a lot of us, that's, we just need to get it out of our systems. No matter what it is, we just need to try it, do it and go, okay, I'm good. Yeah. And move on. Uh, eventually, we get it out of our systems. Uh, but the goal, like you said earlier, is to do this for a living. Yeah. Um, I, I think once uh, I'd like to say, I, I remember her talking her her fondest times was when I was in NXT okay. uh, and the height of the Perfect Ten stuff. So when she saw how the audience was responding to me, and like she'd look around, she goes, "Everybody was doing it." Like I couldn't. You know, so she's like, I'd start, but it's like, she just gets wrapped up in it, but thinking like, they're all doing this for him. Yeah. Like that is a very powerful moment. If you're not on the outside looking in, but if you stand back for a second and, you know, it's going to be the same thing. If your kids already play sports and, you know, they score a goal and everybody's going, eh, and everybody's celebrating. You're like, that's my kid. Holy. Yes. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I get a little choked up thinking about it now, but, um, I think that's when it really set in for that. Oh, this is, he's here. He made it. Yes. He did it. It's done. And this is, this is his life. So oh, I think that's awesome. when it was coolest for her. Yeah. And I like to think about, I like to think that that's, uh, that that was the best time. And it definitely yeah. was for me. I can only imagine kind of um, the lead up to that for her from a parent's perspective that me and you both have now as parents, like what her having to watch your struggle, like how, how long was your struggle and how many times, how long were you in the Indies struggling, plugging away before you got your first big break? Like how, how many years was it? 
Uh, I started in 02. I got yeah. picked up, uh, I think, halfway through 06, the first okay. time, which is relatively a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I thought, it was, I thought it was longer. For me, it was 10 years. It was 10 years before I got my first But this was at a contact. time when they were, doing, um, they were doing those trials. They were going city to city. Yep. Um, yep. So I was fortunate enough to get a tryout close by. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think I got, I got picked up out of that one. Yep. And then uh, spent, what was it, close to three years – between OVW and FCW, and then I got cut in January, I think 2009, from mm -hmm. FCW. Yeah. And then spent, I think, four and a half years trying to get back, and I think I got back later in 2013. Okay. What was that first four years or whatever, that initial struggle before you got signed? Like, So I, I, didn't, how, I didn't... How would you describe that struggle to a civilian? Like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't describe it as a struggle. Because oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know any different. I just thought I was a professional wrestler. Of course, the uh, goal is WWE. But again, I was taken care of once I got around the right people early, which is guys like you, Showtime, Derek Wild, Hacker, mm -hmm. uh, all these guys that were pretty much the top guys in Ontario. You guys were working everywhere, and anybody who worked with you pretty much trusted how you guys operated, and you guys had the best interest in mind match wise and all that kind of stuff so no one really so they found out that a guy like me was associated with you guys and i'm pretty sure you guys had to go around and say oh this is one of our guys just look out for him a little bit just teach him a little bit and everybody yep. go okay no problem so they look out for me out of respect for you guys so i was just in very good hands but being around you guys and going to all these shows and at the time if there's 150 people in the crowd i'm like oh my god this place is packed are you kidding right. me Every and they're, they're all, so I was all amped up. To me, that's, I didn't know any different. That's the journey. That's the start. Well, this is how Stone Cold started out. This is how The Rock and Austin started out or, or you know, Hogan. Yeah. This has to uh -huh. be it. I don't know any different. So those yeah. first, those first three years and stuff like that were like, okay, I'm getting experience. And that's something too that you and Jer would always say, like, you, got, you just got to get out there a little bit. You got to wrestle these different mm -hmm. guys. You got to go to different shows. You got to be seen. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, okay. Okay. And then I think towards the time, right around the tryouts, I was like, okay, you keep an eye on WWE and you start looking for tapes and you start figuring out who's to contact when the time comes and an opportunity came and I had reached out and they said, yeah, come to a tryout. Like it was just literally by luck and happenstance that yes. it was the right time. So I remember, I, I come into this story here and I don't know if you remember <laughs> this, but I'm gonna give you my perspective of things. And it's not to put me over in any way, but I oh I, no, by I, all I, means, by all means, <laughs> I do. I, I there's two things that I want. I, I remember vividly as you're as you're talking about this. How's that for a cliffhanger for you? That is part one with my buddy Sean Spears. Part two will be coming at you next week. If you right now are like. Cody, I hate when you do this to me. You leave a cliffhanger at the end of your part one episodes. And I don't want to wait till next week to listen to this part two. I am enthralled. I am fascinated with the knowledge and the life lessons and just the life in general of Sean Spears. I want to hear more. Well, go right ahead. You can do that right now over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. This entire conversation is up right now, ad-free, the full conversation, part two that's coming next week. Go listen to it now. It's both in audio and video format over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. If you got something out of today's episode, I'm sure you did, whether you're a young entrepreneur, you're a young father, you're a young wrestler, whatever walk of life you come from, there's something from today's episode, I'm sure, that maybe touched you in a special way and kind of hit you different. You weren't expecting this when you decided to listen to a wrestling podcast, but this is not a wrestling podcast. This is also a life podcast. This is wrestling is life is wrestling. And we talk about not wrestling. We talk about life and everything in between. And we did that today with my friend, Sean Spears. Hit me up 
at Cody Diener. And let me know what you thought of today's episode and let Sean know too. And we would love to hear from you and what you enjoyed about today's episode. I'm gearing up for a very busy November and rest of December. In early December, I'm going to be going to Las Vegas to do a little bit of marketing for our upcoming TNA pay-per-view Hard to Kill coming in January. And I get to do something so cool um, in the next few weeks. Number one, not just because it's in Las Vegas. Number two, not just because, hey, I get to make this also not just a work trip like I talked to you about uh, Niagara Falls in the intro with my family. This is also going to be a pleasure trip because I'm bringing my wife with me. Yes, Mrs. Diener will be coming with me to Las Vegas. She's never been. We're going to take in some shows. We're going to take an extra day, go see the Grand Canyon. It's going to be wonderful. But the third reason why this is awesome is because I'm going to be visiting some boys and girls clubs in the Nevada region, and I will be making an impact. You can go right now, actually, over to impactwrestling.com slash making an impact, and you can see some of the wonderful things that Impact Wrestling, soon to be again TNA Wrestling, is doing in communities all across the country. One of those things is guys like me get to go into some youth groups and share a positive message with them i'm if you've never listened to this podcast you've now have and you know that i'm all about positivity i'm about spreading positivity and sharing the lessons i've learned in my life well that's what i do when i go into youth groups like boys and girls clubs i'm going to be doing this for impact wrestling in the boys and girls clubs of southern nevada and i'm going to be sharing my story and making a positive impact in that community and as well letting some of these kids that have maybe never been to a wrestling show before come to the wrestling show that we're going to be having at the palms tna wrestling returns hard to kill and also the next day we'll be doing some television tapings and some of these kids from the boys and girls clubs are going to get to take in that amazing experience they never maybe in their life have been to a wrestling show never even thought of being, going to a wrestling show but they're going to be coming and they're going to be watching TNA. And it's just one of the various ways that we give back to the community and want to make a positive impact in the communities that we go into. One of the many reasons I love TNA wrestling is we're not just about entertaining wrestling fans or entertaining the communities that we go and put events on when we go into those communities, but we also want to make an impact, a positive impact in those communities. And I get to do that in just a few short weeks and bring Mrs. Diener along with me. So maybe I'll, I'll get, keep you guys posted in the upcoming episodes and let you know how that little mini work vacation went for me. If you want to bring me to your wrestling show, spread some love, I'm available, guys. A lot of people think that because I wrestle with Impact Wrestling slash TNA and I'm a producer with them that I don't do independent bookings. I do. I'm extremely busy doing it, and I would love to bring my love of wrestling to your wrestling event. So hit me up at book. Cody at CodyDiener.com. That's book Cody at CodyDiener.com. And I will come and wrestle on your independent wrestling event or do a training seminar with the wrestlers of your wrestling school and the people that are in your wrestling community. I would love to do that. I do a lot of that and I want to do more of it. If you're interested in bringing me to your school or your youth group or event or business to do a keynote presentation, I do that, and I love doing it. You can go to chrisgrayspeaks.com. That's gray with an A, chrisgrayspeaks.com, and you can see some testimonials from my satisfied clients, and you can see some of my topics that I speak to youth about, and hit me up. Hit me up on there over at chrisgrayspeaks.com, and I'd love to come speak at your youth group or event. Other ways you can support me, go to patreon.com slash Cody Diener, like I said, and you can listen to the rest of this conversation with Sean Spears as well as a bonus story. Also support my sponsor, not just my sponsor, but support my business that I am now the vice president of. Still can't believe it. I'm still shocked and I still love it. It's so amazing. Rest When Dead Clothing. That's restwhendead.ca. You can shop the entire collection. You can go see some pictures of me as well as some other sponsored athletes in TNA Stars 
Crazy Steve and Jody Threat. They are part of the Reaper crew over at Rest When Dead Clothing on Instagram. So support me, support Rest When Dead. And if you do, you're supporting some good things. That's going to do it for another episode. I can't wait to come back for part two with Sean Spears here next week on Wrestling is Life is Wrestling. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life is wrestling.